Thank you for tuning in and welcome back to the channel. Today's video is going to be a build guide for a super powerful and fun Crimson Champion tank spec. If you're new here or have never seen these build guides before, I will be going over every aspect of this build so you can pick up and play it just like me after getting through this video. I'll be breaking it down into smaller sections, so feel free to jump around if you need. Timestamps can be found down in the description of the video. If this video is helpful for you, consider subscribing below and giving the video a like as well. I appreciate every single one of them. Without further ado, let's dive into this video. Like any good build guide, let's go ahead and start off by talking about the random enchants and stat priorities. Crimson Champion will be the legendary enchant of choice. This is a powerhouse of a spec to play, and I really like the flavor this random enchant brings to the table. We get a free 10% block chance at all times, and after building up stacks, we spend them to enhance our abilities. The way we utilize this enchant is to be on a priority based rotation, trying to get up as much uptime on the extra block value and threat percentages after using our Shield of the Templar. You can fill in with Shield of the Righteous for some extra AoE threat, but I promise you, don't get hung up on trying to fit Power Word Shield into the build. It's just not worth it. Let's go over the epic REs we use for this build. The three epics used for this build are going to be Emanating Light, Shield of Wrath, and Baleful Hammer. Emanating Light is the single best tank random enchant they have made in years. It single-handedly carries your spec in dungeons and raids. It's honestly a little broken. This allows you to have a constant source of AoE threat and does an amazing job of being able to generate snap threat on pulls after charging into packs of monsters. Also, if you happen to get stunned, this helps keep threat off your party members while you are incapacitated. I absolutely love emanating light. Shield of Wrath is simply there to reduce the cooldown of our Shield of the Templar by a solid 40%. This RE allows for greater uptime on the extra block value and threat from using our Crimson Champion stacks, especially for single target tanking. Baleful Hammer is used to add duration to our Holy Shield by one second each time it is cast. With our other REs, which we will cover in a minute, we are using this to get as much uptime on our Holy Shield as possible. Also, the 5% extra Holy Damage isn't a bad addition for extra threat either. The rest of the REs used for this build are 3 Critical Block, 3 Redoubt, 3 Hasty Avenger Shield, 1 Precision, one Anticipation, one Deflection, and one Holy Guardian. The stat priority for this build is as follows. Hit until 8%, block value, stamina, block rating, and then kind of a three-way tie between dodge, parry, and strength. Dodge and parry will give you overall more percentage avoidance, but strength also gives you more threat and some more block value. They kind of share a similar spot as far as survivability for this spec, so don't go out of your way to stack too much of either of the three stats, okay? Really quickly before moving on, let's touch on the CTC cap. What this means is during fights, every single attack made against you is either dodged, parried, blocked, or misses. We can reach the CTC cap fairly easily as shield tanks, but for lesser geared players out there, move a few town points around to reach the cap before moving on in your gearing process. Why don't we go ahead and move on to the next section of the video where we will go over the talent trees and spells. There will actually be two setups we will cover here in today's video, one more focused for mythic dungeon tanking, it's a decent mix of AoE threat and survivability, the other being strictly used for main tanking bosses in raids. Let's start off by talking about the Mythic Plus dungeon focused version of this build first. Over in Hunter, we grab Aspect of the Monkey and we put two points into Aspect Mastery. Over in Mage, we grab ourselves Invisibility and in Frost, we grab Frost Armor. In Paladin, over in the Holy Tree, we grab Consecration and Holy Wrath and we put three talent points into Blessed Life. Over in Protection, the spells we get here are Shield of Righteousness, Righteous Fury, Devotional Aura, Hand of Reckoning, and Divine Protection. The town points to take here are 3 points into Improved Consecration, 3 points into Divine Strength, 5 points into Anticipation, 1 point into Spiritual Attunement, 3 points into Improved Righteous Fury, 3 points into Tenacity, 1 point into Blessing of Sanctuary, 
three points into Redoubt, and one point into Holy Shield, very, very important, three points into Divinity, one point into Avenger's Shield, three point into Guarded by the Light, two points into Judgments of the Just, and one point into Hammer of the Righteous. Over in Retribution, the spell we take here is Judgment of Justice. The talent points we take here are three points into Heart of the Crusader, one point into Seal of Command, and one point into Divine Storm. Now, some of you might be uh, screaming at your screen at this point and being like, why are you taking Divine Storm on a tanking build? Trust me, when you combine Divine Storm with Seal of Command, you get an immense overlap of AoE splash damage for threat on big packs. It does help a lot in Mythic Pluses, and you can use this combination in raids for trash. It's an immense amount of AoE threat, and trust me, the two talent points you use here aren't going to make or break the build, and honestly, it's just fun to see a huge amount of numbers. The rest of the talents and spells, we're going to start over here in the Priest, we grab Inner Fire, and over in Shadow, we grab Dispersion. Over in Rogue, in the Combat Tree, we take two points into Nerves of Steel, and two points into Precision to help cap us out. The reason I took two points of Nerves of Steel here is because, in Mythic specifically, there is a lot of stun and fear effects, and even if it only lasts two or three seconds, being able to get 10% mitigation for two talent points is immensely powerful, don't sleep on this talent. In the Shaman Tree over in Enhancement, we grab Stone Skin Totem. Over in Warlock, over in the Demonology Tree, we grab Demon Skin. And Warrior is where we're going to be spending the last bit of our points. We grab Charge here in the Arms Tree. Over in Fury, we grab Challenging Shout for a nice AoE taunt. And in Protection, we grab 3 points into Shield Specialization, 3 points into Firm Grip, 3 points into Shield Cover, 3 points into Critical Block, and 1 point into Shockwave. Now, I did grab Sunder Armor in this build. The reason being is because if you want to combine that with Shattering Throw, you can very easily apply five stacks of Sunder Armor to the boss for melee heavy groups. If you find yourself not needing Sunder Armor or if you're in a caster heavy group, you can take this spell out in favor of another cooldown or another ability entirely. Let's go over the single target version of this same build. This is specifically for single targeting bosses in raids. So we have dropped some AoE threat in favor of more tankiness. We dropped Holy Wrath here in the Holy Tree and over in Retribution, we're using Seal of Vengeance now versus Seal of Command plus the Heart of the Crusader plus Divine Storm because these are really just for AoE threat and realistically, we don't really need it for single target tanking. So we have moved our points over into Warlock. We grabbed Drain Soul and we grabbed Summon Voidwalker. The talent points we take here are five points into Master Demonologist, one point into Soul Link and three points into Demonic Embrace. This combination of talents is probably the most mitigation you can get on your tank point for point anywhere on the tree. This can cause problems for lesser geared healers because it does rob a little bit of healing from your group to heal your void walker. But if you're in a group, a well-organized group, realistically, it shouldn't have a hard time staying alive. And you can sub in your summon Fell Hunter for your Voidwalker if it's a magic damage heavy fight. The other talent point we switched around is Shockwave into Vigilance. Specifically for single target tanking, this can help lesser geared tanks keep threat from over geared DPS. And in most raid fights, Shockwave really doesn't do all that much because you're not really going to be able to stun a bunch of adds. There are a couple fights in certain raids that do require some level of CC, so you can just switch this point back and forth. And you may have noticed I've left a couple ability essences free in this version of the spec specifically to allow you to modify this build further depending on your raid composition and what fight you're doing. So just go through your raid, go through your abilities and use these extra ability essences to the best of your ability. Moving on to the next big section, we'll be going over some gameplay explanation. Since we aren't a DPS, we don't exactly have a rotation, but we do work on a priority system for this spec. Priority number one is using our Crimson Champion stacks with Shield of the Templar as often as possible. This is our biggest source of survivability throughout a fight, so focus on keeping this up as often as you can. Even if you have to sandbag, you say, using Shield of the Righteous for more AoE, threat try not to consume the stacks when you don't have to it's much better in the long run 
The other major thing about this build is Holy Shield is being used to its full potential in this build, and man, is it powerful. With my current gear, I go well above the hard armor cap while it's up, and this can really push any tank's survivability through the roof. This is where some gameplay elements start to come up for the build though. Since our Hammer of the Righteous is used to extend the duration of our Holy Shield, you want to not use the ability if Holy Shield is about to come off cooldown. But if timed correctly, you will get a full 10 seconds of uptime on your Holy Shield. And in a dungeon or raid where you're receiving heals constantly, the cooldown gets reduced by over half, if not more. My average uptime on Holy Shield for any encounter is about 60% or more. Being hard armor capped for over half the fight is ridiculously powerful. Other than those two big concepts, keeping your holy shield up as much as you can and correctly using your crimson champion stacks, the rest of the gameplay is fairly easy. You just keep up your inner fire and stone skin totem for more armor while maintaining aggro and using big cooldowns whenever you need them. I will leave you guys off here with some footage of me tanking some mythics so you can get a first hand look at this build in action. I am very very happy that shield tanks are finally in the conversations again for specs that are really good for tanking and project ascension and with tier 6 coming out soon I hope to see us reclaim the throne as the best tanks. Enjoy the footage guys and I hope to see you out there on the battlefield. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace!